Continuing our AL West Farm System previews, we've got the Los Angeles Angels, who may have found their catcher of the future at the trade deadline last year. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked on MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, baseball writer and podcaster. Thank you for making this your first listen every single day. And looking at the Los Angeles Angels, 73-89 and 89 last year, obviously a disappointing season when you factor in they have Mike Trout, probably the best player of this generation, plus a unique talent in Shohei Otani. Uh, in, won an MVP. A runner-up to MVP for Aaron Judge, the only player in baseball who has been a two-way player at this caliber at the same time. And so when you kind of look at what they did this offseason, a lot of work improved the roster in the final year of contractual control of Shohei Otani with the goal of re-signing Shohei. Uh, now, is there going to be some reinforcements coming from the farm system? There will be. Uh, the, the most prominent guy... It's catcher Logan Ohapi, uh, 2018 23rd rounder out of high school by the Phillies. It's really interesting. We had talked before. I did a crossover with the guys from Locked On Angels last year, and we discussed how this system has struggled to develop a homegrown catcher. I'm trying to think about the last time you had a homegrown catcher out of this system. It's been a long time. And so they found an opportunity at the trade deadline to trade former top prospect Brandon Marsh, who was okay for them last year, 93 games, 226, 284, 353, gave you above average to plus defense in center field, traded him to the Phillies. They had a big need after Bryce Harper's elbow injury, kind of meant that they were piecing together the outfield and didn't necessarily have a reliable center field option. And in, in return, they got Logan Ohapi. Now, he got 104 games in double A last year, divided between these two organizations. And the slash line combined, 283, 416, 544. 26 home runs, 41 extra base hits, 70 walks to 74 strikeouts, and 7 of 11 on stolen bases. But when he got to double-A Rocket City, the Rocket City Trash Pandas, 29 games, 306, 473, 673. 11 home runs, 14 extra base hits in 29 games. So he hit the 300, 400, 500 slash line. He had an extra base hit just about once every other game and then had 29 walks to 22 strikeouts. Fantastic numbers. Earned him a brief cup of coffee the last week of the season in LA. Five games, 286, 375, 286. No home runs or extra base hits. Two walks to three strikeouts. I think Logan Ohapi is going to break camp as the starting catcher in LA. You you have Max Stassi there. He's owned quite he's owed quite a bit of money, so I expect him to still be on the roster and still be part of this. But Logan Ohapi absolutely deserves to be the starting catcher uh, for this team. So 6'2, 185. Good size as far as height and not too much weight. Too often we see a lot of these catchers break 200 in a bad way, especially when you see the frames be like 5'10 or so. And because he's kept the physical development under control, he has the offensive and the defensive tools to be an all-around player. I'm going to talk about the defense first because that's what's more. It's that's the biggest thing up the middle is the defense. Uh, his his speed isn't great, 30 speed or so, but uh, plus arm, very accurate, really quick release, and he's got good athleticism as far as you know, the pop time. Under 1.9 seconds, so it gets the ball out quickly going to second. Really good receiver. He's a good blocker. He's got good flexibility. He's got good agility both directions. Again, the pop to come up and bl and catch something high. You've got all of that. So it looks like he's going to be somewhere between above average and plus defense once he adjusts a little bit. And then what I've heard from prospects in Rocket City is that the pitchers love throwing to him. He's very intelligent, very good at remembering and, and retaining the game plan for each individual game, very good like natural leader. And so 
I expect him to be a plus defender probably at the big league level and just be all around, you know, again, good framer, good, good everything. The defense leads, but the offense is not lagging behind, right? So he's gotten really good through his time in the minors. He made it all the way to AAA in 2021, although brief at the end of the year. He's gotten better at contact ability, like so putting an act, like putting the bat on the ball. He's gotten better at that, really consistent as far as quality contact, especially down in the zone. Now, he does pull a lot, so a lot of his power comes from pulling the ball with a, you know, he's a he's a righty, so he's pulling it to left field. But I think it works out because the pitch recognition is really good, he doesn't chase a lot, and he rarely swings and misses. You probably, he's only 22 years old. You probably have a little bit more physical development you can do. So the power might tick up a little bit to above average maybe. But either way, it's something where just the natural strength he has, he makes quality contact. He's going to be at least an average hitter with average power in the bigs. I look for him to do good things in Los Angeles. And Logan O'Hoppy, again, should be the starter this year, hopefully out of spring training. And I... I'll go on a limb and say I think by 2024, he's a, fa- a fantasy baseball catcher. He's one of those that, that actually can make a difference in fantasy baseball, if not later this year. Will be a guy there for you. Number two prospect in the system, shortstop Zach Neto. 2022 first rounder out of Campbell. Uh, really just absolutely blew up his sophomore and junior year. Had a great year in the Cape Cod as well, and so they took him at the 13th overall pick this year. He started off in high A after he signed, and after like a week, they were like, yeah, no, we're putting you in double A. (laughs) You're a double A hitter. So 37 games last year, 299, 377, 476, five home runs, 15 extra base hits, 12 walks to 33 strikeouts, and five of seven on stolen bases. Again, Up the middle, so you kind of got to talk about the defense and what that means. Speed is above average. The arm is plus. Uh, He's a really good athlete. And so he gets into a good uh, throwing position before he unleashes the ball. And so the arm is plus, but it's also accurate. Uh, doesn't, Doesn't have a lot of, most of his, he doesn't have a ton of errors, but the errors he does have aren't necessarily throwing errors. It's something where he gets eaten up by a bad hop, something like that. Uh, he's got good, he's got good footwork. He's got good hands. The instincts are good. You do have a little bit of a question about the clock. That's common for a guy moving into professional baseball, especially making a jump from something like the Big South Conference, where Campbell is, to Double A, which is the toughest jump in the minor leagues. But making that jump after coming from a lower level of competition in college baseball. Can You can understand why he has some questions about the clock, things like that. There's times when he'll make a throw, it's a little bit too late. Uh, or there's times when he'll make a throw when really he probably shouldn't have. He should have held on to it. Uh, Speed-wise, above average runner. Doesn't manifest a ton in steals. He had seven attempts in 37 games. But you can see it on the base paths when he's going, he's trying to stretch a single into a double or going first to third on a base hit, things like that. Offensively, really unusual setup at the plate for Zach Neto. It's uh, it's it's a combination of some of the weird stuff you've seen from like a Bo Bichette and Josh Donaldson. You add a lot of these complicated things in there and it's there's a massive, like he super huge leg kick. His hands drop and come back up. It's a whole thing, but it works for him, right? Like he's a plus hitter. He makes, like he regularly gets the bat into the zone on time. Um the, the swing is kind of a natural uphill swing. It's not a massive uppercut, but it just has natural loft to it. And so that right-handed swing, like he makes solid contact and he hits fly balls. He is a little more aggressive when it comes to his plate appearances. He's not up there to walk. He will take a walk. He walked 12 times in those 30 games, but he is up there to make contact and do damage. He doesn't necessarily have exceptional raw power. I'd probably put his power at average, right? The exit velocities aren't anything amazing. But the natural loft on the swing, the good bat speed, and the ability to read a pitch and be selective with a pitch he can make quality contact on means I can see him being a 20 home run guy. He looks, as of this brief sample, 37 games, Zach Neto looks like he's a guy that can be your 
starter, your everyday starter at shortstop. And so I look for the Angels to probably start him in AAA, and there's a chance you could see him at the bigs this year, depending on the competitiveness of the team and how his development goes. Number three prospect in the system, right-hand pitcher Chase Silseth, part of that really interesting 2021 draft where they took nothing but pitchers. He was an 11th rounder out of Arizona, was the first pitcher in the 2021 draft to reach the majors, was called up in May, uh, had, you know, did some spot starts, went back, to, including a one hitter, and then went back down to the minors, spent the rest of the year in double A, actually was Southern League Pitcher of the Year. So 15 games started in the minors, 228 ERA in 83 innings with 110 strikeouts, so 11.9 per nine to 27 walks, 2.9 per nine with 11 home runs allowed. For Chase Silseth, what you're looking at, plus fastball, 95 to 96. It can touch 99. He's got a, 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 a curveball and a slider. I like the curveball better. Sits in the low 80s. It's a vertical breaker, like a 12 to 6 breaker. Uh, the slider is probably average right now. Sits in the mid 80s. It has a lot of like tight break to it. Both of them, he, he worked on the shape to get them to be a little more effective. And so they're both... When they're on, they're both plus pitches, and he gets tons of swing and miss with them. Obviously, still working on them, but so that's why right now they sit above average for the curveball and average for the slider, but they flash plus when they're on. He also has a splitter, sits in the upper 80s, can get swing and miss on that too, but it's a little inconsistent. I'd probably call it a 40 or 45 now. I think it can, it can get to average. Um the, the control is the big thing he has to work on. He doesn't always keep control throughout the outing. I don't know if it's a stamina thing, uh, but I think with some time and some doing some physical development, he's a little bit shorter for a right-handed pitcher. He's only six foot tall, 217. I think some physical development and then maybe working a little bit on the consistency of those secondaries, you're looking at a guy who could be a number three starter. Uh, but either way, he just has to show that he can go deeper into outings. So I look for him to probably start in AAA next year and then be in the bigs sooner rather than later in like this year in the rotation and hopefully can learn some from Shohei while he's still there. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm hoping Shohei resigns with the Angels. Uh, we'll get to that. It's a whole different show, trust me. Uh, number four prospect in this system, catcher Edgar Cuero. It's funny how they, ha they struggle to develop catchers and all of a sudden now have two in their top four. 2021 IFA, 5'11", 170, decidedly a bat-first catcher. The defense is not necessarily great. He's got great physical tools, but blocking and receiving needs work. Uh, the arm is only average. Accurate. You know, he got about 25% caught stealing last year, but just needs work on blocking balls in the dirt, needs work on moving side to side, and then game calling. Offensively, again, this is where he's going to uh, be an impact hitter. Good feel for the barrel, making quality contact, both le as a lefty and a righty. He can do it. Now, when you look at when you look at his switch hitting, as a righty, he's a little more he's a little more, I guess, patient. Better at taking walks as a righty. A little bit better at tapping into the power as a lefty. So not even on the performance, but both useful. The bat speed's good. Uh, the raw power is probably above average. I think the game power right now is average. He'll probably end up being an above average hitter when he's all said and done who can hit 20 to 25 home runs. So promising for, Ed for Edgar Cuero, looking for him to go to high A this year, probably spend most of the year there. In just a minute, I want to get to the state of the pitching. Again, you drafted a ton of pitchers in 2021. Let's check in on how they're doing. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. We're at the midway point of the NBA season, so it's the perfect time if you're a basketball person to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. No, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Safe, secure, super easy to use. You can bet on everything from the money line, point scores, threes drained, all of that, and then you can combine those bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. If you're here for baseball, good news, the Angels have stuff all over the board. Looking at Rookie of the Year, Logan Ohapi has the 10th best odds at plus 1,600 to win American League Rookie of the Year. 
feels like you don't always see catchers up in there. Obviously, Adley Rutschman was up in that last year. If you look at individual awards outside of Rookie of the Year, Shohei Otani plus 1,200 for Cy Young. He is sixth in the odds for the American League behind Alex Manoa, Carlos Rodon plus 1,000, Dylan Cease plus 900, Garrett Cole plus 700, Jacob DeGrom plus 500. Looking at MVP, two of the three best odds for American League MVP are on this team. Shohei Otani plus 220, we've got Aaron Judge at plus 600, and Mike Trout at plus 800. So, don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 back in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. Okay, looking at the state of the pitching in this system, again, you had a draft in 2021 full of college pitching, right? I think 19 of the 20 draft picks were college pitchers, and you signed every single one of those. And so the idea here is you were trying to dramatically improve the state of the minor leagues. And you saw that in double-A last year. You had so many guys in that double-A Rocket City rotation. Two of the guys that stood out to me, Kai Bush and Sam Bachman. So Kai Bush, 2021 second rounder out of St. Mary's, 6'6", 240. Big guy and really uses that height and the slot to his advantage. So in those 21 starts he got in Rocket City, 367 ERA, 103 innings, 101 strikeouts, so 8.8 per nine, 29 walks, 2.5 per nine, 14 home runs allowed. And the reason that he does so well, so again, big body, 6'6", 240, good size for a lefty, good size period for a pitcher, but especially for a lefty, and then has the good velocity to go with that, like like to work as a lefty, because so many lefties are a little bit slower. His primary fastball, above average two-seamer, sits 93 to 94, can touch 96. But again, he's 6'6", he's got a high three-quarter slot, and so... This thing is coming in, it's a sinker, it's it's going to drop vertically and it's going to run in a bit and it's going to do it from a really unusual angle because the release point is so high off the ground. So it really kind of messes with, it really messes with hitters. It's going to come, it's, it's going to come, it looks like out of the sky and run in on your hands as well as drop below your bat. To go along with that, he's got a plus slider in the mid 80s has a ton of like late, sharp vertical break. It just drops last second under your bat. Lots of swings and misses. He can manipulate how hard he throws it and how much it breaks. And so you'll see Kai Bush take that same slider. And if it's a lefty he's facing, a lefty-on-lefty matchup, he'll break it down and away from him. If it's a righty, he can adjust it and he can keep it up and drop it on your on a righty's back foot. Just really skilled at manipulating what that slider does. Uh, he also has a curveball. It's not great. It's kind of fringy. Uh, he'll use it a lot to get like swings and misses. Not super consistent with it. He has a changeup, kind of average. Has okay fade to it, but again, little inconsistent. Uh, big thing here is he's a pretty good athlete for being so big and del- repeats the delivery really well. Something we always worry about with those bigger pitchers is the ability to repeat the delivery, does that. So he just pounds strikes. Uh, Kai Bush is, to me, is a guy, going to start off in AAA, very much think you see him in 2023 in Los Angeles. Uh, I feel like he's going to be a good number four, number five, again, going to pound the strike zone, and really just going to give you not a ton of swing and miss. He's not going to have a strikeout per nine of 10 or 11 or something. He's probably going to settle around an eight strikeouts per nine at the big league level, maybe a little under. But he's going to get weak contact, and he's just going to confound hitters. Another pitcher you'll probably see this year is Sam Bachman. 2021 first rounder out of Miami of Ohio. Not as big as Bush, 6'1", 235, but got 12 starts in AA. Had some, had some injuries. He missed a, a month with back spasms. He missed another two months with like some issues with his biceps, like some, some inflammation and swelling and things like that. And you can see the velocity and command kind of mess up along with some of that. But he was in Instructs, looked healthy in Instructs, and I look for him to have a good 2023. Probably a little bit behind Bush as far as promotions go. But still, got 12 games in AA last year, 392 ERA in 43 and two-thirds innings, 30 strikeouts, so 6.18 per nine, to 25 walks, 5.15 per nine, four home runs allowed. Again, I think 
the stats don't quite tell the full story because he wasn't healthy last year. When he's on, the fastball sits 95 to 97, a ton of run to the arm side as well as good sink to it. So it is almost impossible to take that sinker and barrel it up for a home run. It's just, it's, it's a ton of ground balls. Uh, guys will roll over it, all of that. To go along with it, he's got a slider, 86 to 89. It's a plus pitch. It dives, it dives a ton really late in the movement. And so it's something where if you're sitting on that two seamer, knowing it's going to drop, but it's going to run in on you, and all of a sudden this slider comes, it's just it's just going to drop. It's not going to run in. And so it's a different kind of visual picture than you're used to because it's down and it's down and in. But it works really well for him. And so he, he uses those two pitches a lot. He has a changeup, sits in the mid-80s. It's not quite an average pitch yet. He needs to, uh, to learn to throw it for strikes more than he does right now. Uh, if he can make that a competitive pitch, he, that, that'll give him a third pitch where you feel better about him in the rotation. Um, but right now, he's just, he's a power guy. I got this fastball. I got the slider. I'm going to blow him past you. Uh, he, the, the delivery is a high effort delivery, right? So he is working pretty hard on there. And I think that contributes some to the injuries, which means there's people who are concerned about the, re- the reliever risk and think he's going to end up being in the back end of a rotate, uh, back end of the bullpen as a high leverage reliever. They're going to still keep trying him as a starter, but his fate as far as starter versus relief depends on can he improve that changeup and can he increase his strike percentage by like 5%. If he can do both of those things, he's going to be a starter. And either way, I like Sam Bachman. I like the stuff. I like the unusual profile of two pitches that drop as your primary weapons. Again, if you can get that changeup that'll run in but won't really drop, it's going to give you a really interesting profile that not a lot of batters are used to seeing as far as an arsenal that they face. I would be remiss if I did not talk about Ben Joyce. So right-hand pitcher Ben Joyce, 2022 third rounder out of Tennessee. If you ever watch Pitching Ninja, you know exactly who this is. 6'5", 225. Got in 13 games in relief last year in Rocket City right after signing. He went straight to double A. 2.08 ERA in 13 innings pitch, 20 strikeouts of 13.8 per nine to four walks, 2.7 per nine, no home runs allowed, and one save. I've literally never had to give reliever stats in this before. So threw me off there. But he is known for the fastball, right? There was a, a viral clip of him in college throwing 105.5. I don't know how hot Tennessee's radar gun is, so I don't know how accurate that is. But in the pros, he hit 104, and I'm pretty sure he hit 105 in Rocket City. The fastball is legitimately an 80-grade fastball. It averages 100, 101, 102. Again, it can run it up to 104 to 105. When he runs it up like that, he can't always throw it for a strike. It'll sometimes sail right over the strike zone. But just knowing that that is coming, knowing that he has 104 really messes with hitters a lot. Um, He throws out of a lower three-quarter slot. It can sometimes flatten out when he's trying to do too much on it. But either way, fantastic fastball. He throws it 80% of the time. Like He's like, this is my pitch. If you can hit it, good luck. Uh, to, he does have a slider to go along with it. It looks like it could be plus, probably above average right now. Sits in the mid-80s. It's a sweepy horizontal slider. He just can't always throw it for a strike. And so that's something where he's trying to get you to chase it. Uh, he's worked on different types of slider grips and different things to try to make it work. Hasn't quite gotten there yet. He has a changeup. It's a 40 changeup at best. He doesn't really use it. Uh, I don't necessarily, if he can land the slider for a strike, he probably doesn't have to really develop that change up any other than every now and then just to keep somebody honest and or to steal a strike early. Uh, He's going to, in college, he really, I mean, he threw once or twice a weekend and that was about it. So the big thing here, one, the fastball control, and then two, can he uh, keep the velocity and the stamina over an entire season? Definitely a thing you have to work on. And we'll see what happens. But if it works out well, if he's able to do it, 
I could absolutely see Ben Joyce getting called up for relief innings in Los Angeles in 2023. That's how good this fastball is. Again, this is probably one of the hardest fastballs in all of Major League Baseball right now. So, very excited for what Ben Joyce can do. Had to include him in here. We, I don't think we've talked about a reliever uh, pitcher, pitcher in this yet, in this entire series, but had to throw Ben Joyce in here. In just a minute, I want to get to this, the superlatives. Some really interesting awards to give out in this system right here on Locked on MLB Prospects. And we are back. So when we're looking at Los Angeles Angels and giving out superlatives, your power tool's only as good as your hit tool goes to middle infielder Jeremiah Jackson. Really interesting kind of guy. 2018 second rounder out of high school. Spent two years and didn't advance out of rookie ball. So 18 and 19. And then obviously lost 2020. 2021, he started to get better at seeing the ball. Went to low A Inland Empire. Struggled early and then picked it up. Then got a quad strain and was out for the rest of the year. Went to the Arizona Fall League. And then last year spent 87 games in double A. 215, 308, 404. 14 home runs, 30 extra base hits, 38 walks to 77 strikeouts, 7 of 11 on stolen bases. Doesn't fit your profile of a typical massive power guy, but massive power, okay? Uh, especially to the pull side, will absolutely destroy a pitch. He got better last year at taking something on the outer half and driving it the other way versus trying to pull everything for a home run. Still kind of a below average hitter. Uh, he struggles with secondaries. He struggles to not expand the zone. And the strikeout rate came down. He was at like 33% in 2021 in low A. So he got better. The, the stats came down, but the peripherals got better in Rocket City. And so it's a question now of what exactly can he do defensively? He's a shortstop. Jeremiah Jackson is a shortstop right now. I think he's going to end up as a second baseman. His speed's above average. He has a really good first step and good range, but I just don't necessarily know if the combined package of the hands, the transfer, and the accuracy of the arm is good enough to stick at short. He might move to second base. He could get moved to center field. Just a couple different options you can do there with Jeremiah Jackson, but he's probably going to go back to double A this year because he's got to get the batting average. 215, 308, 404 is not going to cut it. He's got to he's got he's going to go back to double A, has to get better at pitch recognition, has to get better at not expanding the zone. Your breakout prospect in this system, this was actually surprisingly tough because I don't have a lot of information about what this guy did over the summer or over the winter to solidify some of these things. But Victor Medeiros, right-hand pitcher, 2022 sixth rounder out of Oklahoma State, 6'2", 227. His family, from what I understand, his family actually uh, fled Cuba and came to the States. So he was in college and it's just something where like that's, that's kind of the back history, the backstory there. Only got in six games last year in high A because obviously he got drafted in the draft last year. Stats weren't fan. He only got 16 innings, really small sample size. What he does, uh, the fastball somewhere between above average and plus. I, I, I've seen both. I've seen people graded as high as a 70 grade, but averages 95 or 96. He can he can run it up faster. He, he struggled a little bit into the year last year. Felt like maybe he was a little fatigued. The curveball, uh, plus maybe a 65. Again, very high spin. And so, uh, absolutely a weapon. Gets tons of swing and miss with it. Still needs to be a little bit more consistent with that. Has a good arsenal as far as he has a two-seamer, he has a slider, he has a change. I think he can get most of those to average. And so, you have a plus or better fastball, you have at least a plus or better curveball, and then you have some average other pitches, two-seamer, slider, change. You have the makings of a guy in Victor Medeiros who can absolutely be a weapon, can look like a mid-rotation kind of guy. What he's got to work on, and the reason why I have him as a breakout, because I feel like the Angels have been good at some of these things, is the fastball command, a little bit erratic. He's got to get more consistent with the fastball. He overthrows it sometimes. And I think the reason that that happens is 
He doesn't repeat the delivery really well. He's got he's a, he's a solid athlete for a big body guy, 6'2", 227, and he looks like he could put some more size onto that frame. But he just he needs to be more consistent in that delivery and in the mechanics, and I think that will help the fastball command. So, like I said, ended up being a sixth round pick out of Oklahoma State and uh, signed for about $225,000. Definitely somebody who I can absolutely see this organization doing with him like they've done with a lot of other pitchers, pinpointing what he does well and working on him to get him into a possible mid-rotation guy this year. Another guy that I considered putting in there was Wilmer Arena. We like him a lot, but ultimately Victor Medeiros is the guy we're going to go with here. The guy who needs to stay healthy, I think I mentioned it earlier, Sam Bachman. Missed three months last year between back spasms, biceps inflammation, things like that. And I think he could be in the big leagues this year. If he's healthy all year, there's a very good chance he can make an appearance by the end of the season at the big league level and help you out on this roster. The best outfield defender, outfielder Bryce Tadozio. 2021 undrafted free agent out of Clemson. So didn't get picked into 20 rounds in 2021. Was in double A last year. They started them off last year, rookie ball and low A after the draft and low A. 17 games, but 279, 329, 441, one home run, nine extra base hits, five walks, 28 strikeouts. And it's like, okay, not an amazing stat line, but undrafted free agent, very little investment here. So if we get anything out of him, we're excited. Goes to Rocket City last year, 112 games, 192, 295, 333, 14 home runs, 24 extra base hits, 43 walks to 166 strikeouts in 112 games. They sent him to the Arizona Fall League. Very similar stat line. Uh, he's got he's got strikeout issues. Thir- strikeout rate was around 39-40%. Walk rate was about 10%. Power's not a huge part of his game, but he has a high floor because he's such he's so good defensively. The speed is plus, the glove is plus. He played 853 innings in center field last year and committed three total errors. So for a team that has questions um, about center field outside of Mike Trout, like he was a non-roster invitee to spring training. Offensively, I do not think he is ready for the bigs, but he has such a high floor because of the good defense that if something happens and you need a defensive outfielder for a week, for 10 days, for two weeks, he's a very good candidate to get a call up this year because the floor is so high on defense because he's so good defensively. You know, it's something where the higher the floor is, the more opportunities you're going to get to figure out the rest of it. Obviously has pitch recognition issues. I expect he'll probably go back to double A, but the Angels know that they can call on him and he'll play plus defense at the major league level almost right away. Fantastic week this week. Keep We keep going tomorrow with the Texas Rangers who have a ton of infield prospects and now have their infield set for about six years now that they have Simeon and Seager and Nathaniel Lowe and Josh Young on the corners and so trying to figure out how do you fill the holes in the outfield and then what do some of these pitchers look like Uh, like a Kumar Rocker like a Jack Leiter very excited to talk about this system tomorrow in the meantime if you have questions for Monday's mailbag I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball shows on Twitter at Locked on Farm you can email us Locked on MLB Prospects at gmail.com or drop your questions in the new Locked on MLB Prospects Discord. Link is in the episode description. Link is in the show notes. Until tomorrow's show, this has been Locked on MLB Prospects. Oh.